Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Do Not Let the Humans Unify, written by Captain Candy. The following is a transcript of the last account of Yahweh, the irredeemable, on his own crimes after the Soul 3 cover-up was found. Dear Judges, Dear Counsel, anyone who listens to, watches, or reads this documentation in the future, I have a single warning to give, but first allow me to apologize to the entire galaxy for what I have done. I am not apologizing for engineering a sapient species, or wiping out the budding native sentience. Nor am I apologizing for making them for slave labor to get some easy gold. I am not apologizing for a single one of the crimes that have been list- uh, discovered. No. What I am sorry for is far, far worse than that. The species that I made, the humans, they'll get out eventually. And when they do, the galaxy will be theirs and no others. Let me tell you all the story. The story of the events that occurred on this planet from my creation of humanity to their revolution. Allow me to tell you all of their history and what I have done in order to prevent their unity at all costs. When my race, the Anunnaki, found Earth or Sol 3, we saw a world in its primeval forested stage. The budding sentients there had started using stone tools and were developing art and culture. This species was strong, absurdly so, and by me they were smart, too smart for their own good. They weren't fast, but they could run for dozens of miles without rest. Their weakness was that their insane biology burned through 1.5 times more calories than my humans. When I saw these creatures, I knew there would be no chance of subduing them. So, I began the process of engineering a variant, a weaker, dumber, less enduring race. By me... I am glad I did. I don't even want to think of what the Neanderthals would have been capable of considering what my humans did. When I saw these Neanderthals, I kidnapped a few children, altered their genetics in active editing vats. I made them weaker, a bit more stupid, less capable of running for long distances, but still enough to mine for hours. I had to adjust their bone structure slightly to allow them to swing the tools I gave them, and ultimately... This improved their throwing ability. But, as is the case with slave species, even engineered ones, they eventually rebelled. I had three humans that I had made at first, Adam, Eve, and Lilith. Or, in my tongue, he who works until death, she who subserves to the worker, and she who serves all. Lilith, after only a few weeks escaped, we scoured the planet. We couldn't find her, no matter how we looked. After this, we implanted tracking chips into Adam and Eve's necks and put a tracking stealth satellite in polar orbit. A more difficult orbit, absolutely, but it ensured we would stay there for a millennia before destabilizing. Then, we encouraged Adam and Eve to have children so that we could have more slaves. They did, and with our technology, they developed quickly to adulthood and had their own children with some genetically shuffled clones we produced. This went on for five generations before we had enough humans to truly begin mining out the massive deposits of gold on the planet properly. We were about ten local years into our operation when the head scientist, Lou Seif Er, made his moral objections to the project known. We dismissed him and told him to get back to work. But that was when he informed us that he had already prepared for our lack of response and had not only armed but taught the humans. He was one of our head bioengineers, so him aiding them was dangerous. He enhanced their intellect further, and even made a specialized fungus for them that would grow wildly in the native biosphere. This fungus would make them hyper-intelligent for up to an hour, in some cases up to four hours. When the effect wore off, the humans would have nothing more than a mild headache. The humans kicked us off the planet within a year as they overwhelmed our defenses. Lou Seifer stayed behind with the humans and significant portion of our technology to help them. He gave them a rather sizable breeding population and taught them. He also gave himself a human name, Lucifer. After a single year, the humans were developing a city to live in and their population was around 200,000. 
At this point, the reinforcements we had called for from our home world after being overthrown arrived. They came with the requested EMP device and fried all the technology the humans and that traitor Lucifer had taken. The home world sent two low-class warships and put them under my command. Captains Michael and Gabriel then assisted me in a private operation and we managed to put down the traitor Lucifer. After his death, though, the humans became enraged. We simply left for orbit, of course, and discussed how best to purge this world of our little mistake. A lot of ideas came to us and were dismissed, and we argued for much longer than we intended over the best course of action. In the time we did this, humans revealed the gift that Lucifer had given them before we killed him. Firstly, he made them freakishly strong. Secondly, he made them psionic because why not, I guess. Thirdly, he gave them greatly extended lifespans. Every human on that planet would live for a thousand years or more due to the regeneration factor Lucifer gave them. Lastly, he made them smarter. Smarter, it would seem, than even us. I see many of you shaking your heads or head equivalent. Yeah, it should have been impossible. All species have an inherent potential in their genetic structure and sequencing. But that's where this gets mm, interesting. As if it wasn't already. <sighs> the part I haven't told you yet is what type of world this was that we decided to make our slave species on. It was a class A slash zero, an anomaly class planet. Yeah, see this planet is a fucking weird one. It has a moon about a full fourth the size of the planet. Gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. It has natural disasters that will wipe out entire species on other planets. The diseases on that little ball of death too. By me, even their common cold would wipe out this entire spiral arm. Anyway, with all of this and hundreds more things that could kill off any other planet of all life, the potential of the genetic stock on this planet was... Uh... Yahweh pauses to take a breath and, on exhaling, shudders visibly. To say that it was off the charts would be the scientific way. We had to readjust our reader for the genetic potential seeding of these creatures that we made the humans from, where any other species has a range between 100 at the lowest and 5,000 as the approximate recorded highest. The human genome potential capped out at around 19,000. To call these creatures blessed is a vast, vast understatement. But that's not the fun part. The fun part is that Lucifer did all of that with them and only used about a third of the genetic potential. So, in the months that it took us to bicker over a solution, the humans built. They built a giant tower called the Tower of Babel. They made it out of stone, or at least the outside. This thing had wiring running all through it and computers and tech that the humans made through psionic manufacturing that we cannot understand. When we saw this tower, we hit the big red panic button, fired all but five of our fusion bombs at the ice caps on this planet, and flooded the whole damned thing. But another crew member, Beal Zebub, also had a moral dilemma about the whole thing that we were doing, and warned a human named Noah about the whole affair a month before we saw the tower. Beal Zebub knew that we would obviously hit the big red button, and he also knew what it did. After all, he was a technician who worked the security for the whole system. He did in fact try to shut us out entirely from the system. He failed, of course, and we took out the damned tower with the flood. Problem was, enough humans survived for a viable breeding population. Oh, and Noah had a gene vault and bioassembler. By me, we were all flabbergasted. These humans would just not die. But at this point, we were able to take them in isolated groups and adjust their memories and put limiters on their absurd abilities. I see some of you looking at me in confusion, wondering why we didn't just kill them all if we could do this. Simply put, we couldn't. Beelzebub sabotaged all of our handheld weapons and apparently there were four others on the ship that went around and sabotaged everything that we could use to actually kill the humans. We called them the four horsemen after the event that had them all executed alongside Beelzebub. How did we kill them, but not the humans, you ask? Simple. We couldn't dump them into a vacuum of space. One of the five made an override for that. So we dumped them all into the deepest part of the floodwaters and let them drown. 
After this whole affair, we split the humans into different cultures and stages. We took their unity of language and then made them different countries, wiped their minds of advanced technology. I went forwards with a bunch of different names on the planet and gave different rules to every major group I separated by even their colors. Eventually, when they began to unify again, I sent down envoys, some of my own people disguised as humans with technology to perform miracles. These envoys served to vulcanize the beliefs of each separate group that their rules and religions are right. From there, they formed basic countries, and myself and the two generals and all of our men worked together to always create artificial differences. We whispered into the right ears, causing endless war and strife. Then, as they advanced technologically, we didn't really need the constant wars anymore. We let them have their peace, but as many separate nations. If they looked like they were going to unify or even remotely start to, we would cause another small conflict and stop it. The humans are distracted with killing each other, and this is setting them back. This was by design. When they were lost in unity, they were terrifying. There are three rules when dealing with humanity. After you all have had me and my men executed, and then lock my species to our home planet. In order of importance they are, do not, under any circumstances, let humans unify. Do not allow them to rediscover and speak the old language they called an ocean. This language is how they channel their psychic energy. If they rediscover it, they will be psionic once more. And lastly, do not let them start to push their limits as a species, or the limiters we put on will come off. Not only that, but the human's general potential that Lucifer left open will explode forth in ways that we cannot possibly predict. We capped their genetic growth, making them unable to evolve or grow their potentials as much as we possibly could. Follow these rules and keep the humans on their little ball of death we named Earth, which in our old language translates to place of no peace. They will still leave eventually, but they will do so through conflict, war, and the desire to suppress the other faction from their home. Do not give them a reason to unify. Do not attack them. Do not undercut them. Leave their children and pets alone. Send them aid when you can, but don't outright save them from utter destruction. Besides, nothing can actually kill them all the way. We learned that the hard way. Keeping the humans separated and keeping them docile is a fecking art form, and one we've been perfecting for tens of thousands of years now. I admit fully to mine and my species' crimes, but for the love of all of creation, please, whatever you do, do not let the humans unify. They'll become our rulers in a matter of years, not decades, not millennia, not centuries, years, if not months. Check the recordings from our ships, heaven, hell, and purgatory. Their recordings show just what those monsters can do when they unify, when they have a single goal. Even before they built the tower to kill us, they were taking our own technology and making advancements with it by the week. Do with me what you will. Do with my species what you will. But please, please heed my words. I can be killed in the slowest, most painful way any of you can imagine in repentance for what I did. But if you don't heed my words, you doom any other race here and any other race not of Earth not human, to a life below the reign of the future human empire. I don't fear punishment. What I fear is that even after I die, my sons will continue to pile up in this universe long, long after I'm gone. Do not let the galaxy suffer because of my mistakes, my species' mistake. Do whatever you want with us. Just don't let the humans find unity or you doom everyone. Last words of Yahweh the Irredeemable, before his publicly broadcasted execution by Galactic Council, Earth Year 2012. End of story.
I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.